December the 10th has been named Human Rights Day. However, where does Nigeria stand in the protection and preservation of human rights in the country? And also, more security operatives have been killed by the Islamic State of West African province, ISWAP. When will this menace end? Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cohn. Well, it's another December 10th, meaning another Human Rights Day, a day where the world celebrates the adoption of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, a document proclaiming the inalienable rights, which everyone is inherently entitled to as a human rights or human being, I beg your pardon, regardless of any status. Now, even though many countries are celebrating this event, issues such as um, police brutality, sexual abuse, gender discrimination, illegal detention, have prevented Nigerians from celebrating this day. Now, joining me in the studio to have this conversation, I have Ugo Chukwi Kiaka, he's a political analyst, and of course, John Wesley, also a political um, analyst. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank, thank you. So, I, I was listening to one of my favorite shows today on the radio, and the question they were asking every Nigerian was, have you at any point in your life as a Nigerian felt that your human right was abused? I'll start with you, John. Uh, that, that, that question for me is an understatement. <laughs> really? Since the day I, you know, I, I realized my right from left, my rights as a citizen of this country has been abused. How so? You didn't give me good roads, you didn't give me light. I, I, I create everything, I use myself. Even I have to beg for a job. And the one who created me gave me right to all of these things. He says, I should dominate. I should, I should do as I like. And so at some point, some people who constituted a, a government decide to begin to deprive me of all of those rights. And you know, at some point, we would also even create terrible roads in my area. You know, deprive me. Almost, you know, at some point, we want to even deprive me of my life. Hmm. So absolutely, when you look at it holistically, um, I have been deprived of my rights in so many areas, not to now talk of police brutality and all of that. Ugo, I, I want to ask you the same question, but I'm sure that I know what the answer will be. <laughs> <laughs> but, but let's go a bit further. If, if Nigerians seem not to be celebrating the Human Rights Day, even as a country that has been one of the first to append its signature to one, whatever the United Nations, whatever chatter, the United Nations brings forward. We're always very, very quick to sign these things. But in, in, in reality, we seem to be suffering from right abuses. Let's even start with something as simple as police brutality. It's not as simple, but I'm just saying, every single day, there is one harassment or the other, if not from the police. It can be some other uniformed agency. And it seems to have become a normal thing in this country but yet, we're advocating for freedom of rights. Well, I think what we have in Nigeria, I keep telling people that what we have in Nigeria is an abusive relationship with our country. Oh, and I didn't see that one coming. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 but, but that, that's what it is. It's an abusive relationship we have with our country. Uh, for example, let's say you, 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 you are married to Nigeria. Believe me, you would have stepped out of this marriage, you would have asked for a divorce. Mm. But the country we are in makes it difficult for us to even have this conversation to say, okay, I want to step out of this, this relationship. It, does, it doesn't go well for me, all right? Because like you said, from, from cradle up to this point, uh, to get back to you in a, in a hospital that is not fit for mm -hmm. cat and dog in the United States. Wow. They, they gave birth, you went to a school that is not fit for animals in the United States or United Kingdom developed countries. Uh, you apply on rules that are certified to kill people. Mm -hmm. uh, you, go, you, you, you receive education that is not fit for 21st century, all right? So, uh, and right to education, right to life, right to life and the rest of them is, like you mentioned earlier, these are in a, in a liberal right that, that I, you're entitled to as a citizen. But because we're in a country, I think our, the, the issue that we're having is because of how we value life. We don't, we don't see life as something that is, uh, that is important or that the sanctity of life. We don't value life. That, and it has to do with our culture. So uh, if someone gets abused or get molested, the next thing you ask, uh, uh, leave it now. Leave it for God, you know. Uh, don't do anything. Do that, do that. And so over a long period of time, even from the days of our fathers, 
and up to this moment, we've built up a culture that makes it easy for people's right to be trampled upon, people's right to be neglected upon. But we live in the 21st century where we don't wait for the government or those who are educated enough to go get that information. The information is out there. The United Nations, I mean, we have that speech by uh, Antonio Guterres, the General Secretary, um, talking about the theme for this year, which is youth, young people standing up for human rights. Before, we probably didn't have a a robust idea of what our rights are. But we're in the 21st century. We know what it is. Why is it still so difficult for us to be able to stand up for those rights? What are the blockades? Why do we? Everybody. We, which everybody? The young people. Which young people? We see, have Nigeria's see, population. See, no, 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 see, Nigeria's let's... population is 80% are young people. I have always said this, and I will repeat this. I told you the NOA that surfaces during election and goes back to sleep after election until NOE does something that looks like what INEC does across all the polling units. All these things you are talking about. How many people know their rights? I have seen people who police will arrest, write evil statement for them, and we tell them to endorse it. Youth, Nigerian youth. And he or she will endorse it until someone else has come to say, how did, you, how did you endorse this? When there is an interpretation. And what is responsible? Because I, I'm guessing that Anugo would not write that, but... Can I, can I, can I answer that? What is yes, responsible? Yes, please. What is responsible is ignorance. And ignorance is a byproduct of lack of education. And education, as you know, in the United Nations Charter, part of, you know, part of the SDG... You have to go to school. Because you see, when we say education, we're talking about ABC, a formal you, education. No, you have to go to school. You have to go to school. You have to go to school. Because we do not necessarily. Civic education does no. not necessarily. When he have said, to when he said school, education, right? when he said education, it is beyond the four walls of the classroom. That is where so I was going. So the education that I have been deprived of by the government, the NOA, who is not giving the youth on the streets and everyone across the local government, LCDAs, to have an understanding that this is your right, all because they also want such youth to fall under the sledgehammer of police brutality and all of that. They do not know. Very few, very few know. And those who are also supposed to know are not watching Plus Politics, are not watching programs where they're supposed to know. They're watching Big Brother Africa and watching all other stuff oh, wow. and all of that. So it is important to mention, to, let me tell you, don't be surprised, that the one who has gone to the university with a first class degree, who doesn't watch Plus Politics or doesn't watch any other program where he or she would have an understanding that this is my right, does not know. And such rights are being violated every day. Because there are bodies who are meant to actually, you see, I've said it, until all TV houses, away from the traditional, you know, like the real traditional TV house that will sometimes tell you these things, until every TV house begins to talk about this is your right, it is the law, and all of that. And everybody gets to know, just like the ringtone, we still have a long way to go when it comes to human rights. Let's take a quick look at um, the... United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres and uh, listen to a little bit of what he, he had as a message to all of us all across the world. This year on Human Rights Day, we celebrate the role of young people in bringing human rights to life. Globally, young people are marching, organizing and speaking out for the right to a healthy environment, for the equal rights of women and girls, to participate in decision making and to express their opinions freely. They are marching for their right to a future of peace, justice and opportunities. Every single person is entitled to all rights, civil, political, economic, social and cultural, regardless of where they live, regardless of race, ethnicity, religion, social origin, gender, sexual orientation, political or other opinion, disability or income or any other status. On this International Day, I call on everyone to support and protect young people who are standing up for human rights. So he's talking about young people marching, young people protesting. I'm thinking in Nigeria, no, 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 no. <laughs> because the last time young people decided that they were going to protest, I'm sure you guys remember what happened. Yeah, uh, and it was it's a sad story because at the end of the day, uh, let's move back a little bit to uh, show where 
uh, Revolution group that protested around the National State and the rest of them. And that was, I think, around August, September or so. And that was before the president went to New York to go and speak at national, uh, the United Nations. And at the end of the day, you have, like, especially in Nigeria, people are not marching. If, you, if people that have decided to stand up for their right to speak, the showers and the rest of them, look at what is happening to them. Right? And at the end of the day, what is the UN telling us? Is, is it for us to make a video for us to tell us that people are marching, people are clapping, people are doing all those things? But in Nigeria, we don't have that right. Our democracy is collapsing. All right? People don't have freedom of speech again. They're trying to restrict our social media. So we don't tweet, so we don't say things, so we don't, we don't, we don't galvanize ourselves to speak out and to demand better. So and what is the UN telling us people are marching? No, we're not marching in Nigeria. The very, the very, the very tenets of democracy is eroding well, every people day. Are, people are marching in Bangkok. Yeah, people are marching in Hong Kong. In the places where they are marching, what has the UN said about uh, the brutalities too? What, 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 what has See, happened? See, the truth of the matter is, we keep deceiving ourselves. We keep uh, what I what I detest mostly is the fact that you know. The, the, the window talks, you know, you just see people come and then you talk, this is what... But the is, UN has spoken out, whether we like it or not. It's spoken just, about countries what? Countries are... What is the impact of the message? No, spoken countries, about what? And I'm not in any way... No, I want, I want, I want us to have another... Wait, UN, Mary, but, I want us to have an understanding. For the argument, yes. they can only appeal... Appeal. ...to the consciences. Mm. I mean, these countries are sovereign. The UN cannot come... Do you know that somebody power? just lost his liver or something as a result of marching? Somebody was shot. You saw that. Somebody was shot. A youth that probably maybe his kidney or his liver or whatever would not function properly anymore. And they could not. He was shot. He's a youth. He must have heard the United Nations talk about this reawakening and then go out march for whatever and all of that. The other guy, too, do you know how many people were tear gas fired with uh, rubber bullets and all of that? All of these things we keep hearing them. We hear them. I have come to realize that in a situation whereby people want to fight for their rights and it's not comfortable with certain people who are in power all over the world, not just Nigeria, who are in power all over the world, there's always a revert. And it's always terrible. That is the situation. You see, over, it, it's unfortunate that the president has been quiet over the show of case. He's been just quiet like nothing well his his special assistant on media had said that the, that is the, not the president the as far as i'm concerned well, it's the president. yes that is not the president that is not the president if we did not vote for garbage that is the truth the nigerians did not vote for his name we did, he is not a flag bearer of any political party so if Garibashi can just be talking and be saying no manner of things, and at the end of the day, they will lie, and they will rely, and they will rely, and rely, and lie. You see, that is not the precedent. The truth of the matter is, in situations like that, in advanced countries, even if they want to lie, the president will still come before the media and lie. We know that the president already said something. We we'll take a position, either a lying position or a truthful position. We will know that the president has, the president has not addressed the issue. Uh, Ugo, so... Let's begin from there. The president has not said anything about these things. People have been killed in protests. Trigger-happy police officers uh, have killed their own, have killed youth coppers, a little girl who was on her way from school. People have died in the, you know, in the crossfires. And the presidency still seems to be quiet, as he has said. Could this be misread as him being OK with it's, all of the things that are going on? It's not being misread. It is clear to the blind. The deaf can hear it. That whatever is happening, the president is okay with, with uh, uh, the anti-human rights move that is going on in Nigeria. The president, Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, is okay with it. Because if he's not okay with it, he'll come out and speak. Right? The, DSS, the DSS does not report to me. They don't take instructions from me. All, right? uh, all the guys that work for him doesn't take instructions from me. They take instructions from the presidency. He is the leader. You see, John Maxwell rightly said that everything falls and rises under leadership. So if he's not saying something, that means he's endorsing it. And his quietness is not helping anybody. So what, what are we saying? All right, from, from the shy guys that were killed, uh, from those that went to protest about uh, Biafra that were killed, uh, the recent one, the journalist, that, the, uh, the journalist from China, the young guy that was killed after the NYC, and the young girl was killed last week. Right? A woman went to go and vote, part of human rights, election in Kogi State. She was burnt. They gave the president's wife an award a week after. So who is joking? The UN can easily wake up and tell us some things that doesn't make sense. And uh, see, the truth is that, yeah, we'll call for you, and it doesn't make sense. Whereas the president and his wife will fly to New York and sit down and be drinking beer. Uh, sorry, be drinking uh, tea. The UN tea. this year be drinking tea. is focusing not on leadership, per se. They're focusing on 
followers. They're no, focusing on young people and they're saying it's time for young people to take their place in leadership. Well, okay, it's so, time so, for young so, people to speak up. So, uh, and my uh, question uh, uh, to both of you, and you can take your time to answer, is how do we take this, this spot that the UN no, is no, see, see, mandating see, us see, to? You, UN can't keep asking us to do something, whereas there's no commensurate uh, balance to what they're asking us to do. What have they done so far with Showare? This is a youth being that, that, is, that, that is right. Is, is, there is a UN office in Nigeria. What are they doing? There is a UN spokesperson in Nigeria. What are they doing? All right. I just told you about the protests that happened in Surrey, that they tear gas all the revolution now. The president still went to New York to speak. And, and, and they took pictures in front of the New York building and uh, the UN building in New York. So, on, on who, so at the end of the day, you're asking young people to take up themselves, to defend themselves and everything, and you're not helping them. You're not supporting them. All you do is just give us video, video, skip, video, via, video interview. Oh, who does it help? Is there not a, there's a UN representative in Nigeria? See. How can't he document all the, all the atrocities that is happening and report to these guys? There's a security council Do you in think the they UN. don't have uh, let me roll out. Let me roll out names. Let me roll out certain names that we have been in the struggle way back. And some of blessed memory. I will start with George Yemi Wilade. See that the, we have had young people. It is not until now that the uh, UN will now come and say that you, uh, you, you too. No. Way back. George Jeremy Wilade, Africa, of blessed memory, Aluta Continua. Let me tell you, those people were at the forefront of human rights. Wale Aluta. Embe, who is also a member, who was, was a member of the National Assembly, who is now eating money. Maybe because as a result of the experiences during the time when youths were trying to fight for human rights, he realized that this is a country where you must fight for the money. It's not for human rights anymore. You fight for the money. Now, we have had a series of comrades who are no longer comrades, who are now comrades. As a result of what? Because when they were fighting for human rights, is it that they throw them in jail? Is it that they are beaten? Is it that their parents will die in the course of the process? We have had comrades who have lost their parents. All in the name of trying to fight. This same show were there in the days of Unilag, student unionism. We know certain antecedents and all of that. I have stood before several governors and named them commissioner of police to fight for human rights, to fight for students and all of that. In the days where they were shooting gun and shooting gun, we have done all of those things. Not now. Even we have gone to the point of contesting elections. So United Nations should begin to talk in other areas, not just telling Nigerian youths that we should begin to come and do whatever. We have been doing it, but we only have a system that has failed. I told somebody that student movement died under the watch of President Olusha Gwambasanjo. Since the time that student leaders began to use Pojo Pan, executive vehicles, got millions of naira and all of that, and went abroad, led Nigerians to start, you know, dying here and there. And that was when the student unionism died. There were several things that were left undone. I remember, let me tell you, sometimes, maybe about um, in 2006, I'm going to tell you, the Agor crisis, the Osu crisis, where students were being killed and all of that, we went to the forefront of that crisis to fight for the rights of students. There were so many of us that were shot. There were so many of us that were put in jail. There were so many people that did not graduate, all because of what? Fighting for the right of students. It is not today. It has always happened. So the only thing that I know from, from that we will continue sound, to do... From the way you sound, it sounds like there's no hope. There's... Uh, absolutely nothing we can do. All that we've been fighting for, this, it's needless. Are you, are you trying to say that we've not, as a country, recorded n any, any progress whatsoever in terms of young people you know, being in the forefront of the fight? The young people who have always been, at the, I've told you, at the forefront of the fight, what happens to them eventually? They used to be comrades. They are now comrades. So what are you saying? We should roll our hands. What I am saying. Should we fold what our I hands and throw in the towel? That, should we? What I am saying is that so uh, these young people who have always done this did not receive enough support from those who are meant to support them. We had see the funniest so, thing is so, that. So you're saying there is no need to keep doing it because there was no support. Now, if, if there is no need to keep can, doing can, it, can somebody I, like me will not be here. Can I, can I come in? Can I come in? We, we need to go quickly. We will be back after this break. Stay with us.